Hi there, Simon from simonwoods.com. I'm hiding here behind a couple of uh, bottles of Rioja. And they are stable mates. They're from sister wineries. Um, so the main, the more famous of the two wineries, La Rioja Alta. Uh, and it's got on here, 75th anniversary of, of this label, started in 1942. Um, so uh, I've got the Reserva 2008 from these guys. Um, and uh, it's funny, it says La Rioja Alta, that's the name of the producer. Rioja Alta is then also the name of the region. I believe that this is the first vintage where they've actually got um, some garnacha in from the district La Rioja Baja. Uh, so I think it's about 80% um, Tempranillo with this 20% of garnacha. Uh, the other one is from uh, this winery Torre de Ona, which La Rioja Alta or well, that group bought uh, about 1995 or something like that. Uh, Reserva 2012. So they're both reservers, um, but this one aged mostly. Well, I think the our dancers got quite a long time, like three years in uh, uh, in American oak. The uh, Torre de Ona, uh, four years younger, and it's got. Um, I can't remember how long it's been in oak, like maybe a bit, a bit shorter time, like 18 months. Uh, but in French oak and what they call Caucasian oak. Uh, so I don't know whereabouts in the Caucasus it comes from, uh, nor, I have to say, nor precisely where the Caucasus is, but um, somebody else who uh, is uh, more up on geography than me will, will correct me and, uh, and say, that's very tish, Simon, so uh, you can go and do that. So I'm in this dilemma, which do I do first? The one that I'm expecting to be uh, softer and more mellow, or the one that I'm expecting to be firmer and fruitier? Bit of an argument either way. Um, I normally tend to do uh, younger wine before older wine, so I'll do that. That. So uh, this is the 2012 Torre de Ona uh, Reserva. Give it a whirl. Ah, oh, that's that smells rather lovely. Um, it's um, sometimes when you have these the, these Riocas that have been aged uh, quite a lot in French oak. If you get them when they're uh, almost too young, that oak is just uh, too much front and centre. Here, uh, it's uh, it's almost as if the oak is sort of said, right, I'm going to be your framework for the first few years of your life, and then I'm going to slowly uh, slowly dissipate. So you're still left with a little bit of that slightly, um, slightly woody rather than toasty character. Um, but then there is this gush of um, quite fragrant fruit. Sometimes I get this orange peel character in Rioja and I get a little touch of that. I also get a touch of, um, uh, of apples, I get a touch of red berries, I get a touch of dark berries and I get spice as well. It smells, uh, it smells young, vigorous, inviting there's something ever so slightly medicinal but in a good way in there and um, makes me want to get my chops around it but also makes me think um, I'm probably seeing it at a rather young uh, stage in its development. And it's quite firm, 2012 was a um, really good vintage, it's got a lovely balance. Uh, so this oak is probably driving some of the tannin structure but then uh, as that, uh, as the wine sort of expands in your mouth you get more of the, the, the fruit power and it's one of those, let's have a look at the alcohol, it's not 13.5%, it doesn't feel like it's a massive wine, but it certainly doesn't feel like a, a shy fawn. But what I, what I like about it is it's got this intensity without trying to overwhelm you with power. Um, and so it's got depth of fruit, and it's got persistence, and uh, yeah, almost, a, well, what time is it now? Uh, half past four. I want to decant this and serve it about seven o'clock because it feels like it's got a lot of opening up still to do. But I'll give give this one a bit, little bit another swirl and uh, see if it opens up in my mouth. I like that a lot. The spittoon is dry. Um, okay, let's put that to one side uh, and move on to Vigna Ardanza um, Reserva 2008. Um, so I think. Um, I think the previous one, just I think it's mostly Tempranillo with a little bit of uh, Mazuelo, also known as Carignan. But this is the one that, uh, for the first time, uh, Vignard Dancer 2008, it's got um, 20% Garnacha in. And a huge difference in aroma. No, well, maybe not huge. They both smell of nice red wine. And they definitely both smell of Rioja, but Rioja in their different ways. Okay, similarities first in terms of smell. Um, there is this little bit of fragrance there. There's that spice, a uh, touch of more spice here, probably a little bit of vanilla from that American oak. Uh, but this uh, almost a clove-like character mixed in with the orange peel. And it's got the berries, but here gentler, softer berries. Uh, differences here it's far more mellow it's four years older but I think also American oak uh, puts more of a relaxed feel to a wine the French I suppose if you imagine your stereotypical Frenchman sort of a bit more 
upright and, uh, um, I was going to say buttock clenched, but that's maybe being pejorative towards the French. Yes, maybe a little bit more correct. If I think about a French waiter compared with a, hi, my name is Marty and I'm serving you today. It's a much more friendly, uh, friendly nature and open and... Um, uh, that you get in the in, in the Vigna Ardanza. Uh, so it smells um, it smells more developed. Yeah, four years older you expect it, but it smells more than four years older. Uh, it smells like it's going to be a rounder, more mellow wine. If the obvious thing I think of uh, is in terms of beef, because I always think of beef. Uh, I think of the first one as one I, the one I want to have with my ribeye, and this is the one I want to have with my oxtail. So. Uh, Different parts of the cow, but still both cow friendly. I haven't tasted it yet, but I taste it. Oh, and that lovely, mellow, warm, enveloping, gushing, uh, touches of coconut, this mature, evolved red fruit flavour. Um, but then driving it through. Uh, in the first one, I got the framework of tannin uh, from oak, uh, but also tannin from the fruit. Here I get um, maybe not as much of a... Uh, a framework of um, oak tannin, but still those fruit tannins are there. Here I notice the acidity more, and it's strange because I think of Grenache as being a low acid variety, uh, whereas Carignan has got in the first one, admittedly only 5% uh, higher acid. Um, but that's what I notice. I notice a more sinewy structure, um, and um, so I like them, I really like them both. And uh, uh, fortunately, we've got people coming around tonight, the, the, the bottles are going to go to. Uh, um, into good gullets, um, but um, it's whether I do, uh, it's too late for Oxdale now, they're, they're coming around in a couple of hours, uh, but um, uh, I've got a sirloin that I'm about to roast, uh, and I've got a feeling that uh, when we try and decide which, which of these goes better with it, um, there's going to be debate, but there's going to be enjoyment as well. Hey, hope you enjoy them, go out and buy them, because they're both terrific wines. See you soon.